Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Insightful Accountant webinar. Grow your revenue this tax season. How outsourcing can increase your bottom line. Presented by Liz Mason and Christine DeAngelis. Sponsored by Canopy. Insightful Accountant is an online news and information source written for small business advisors interested in the latest news and offerings in accounting technology. My name is Emily Hedrick, and I'll be your webinar host. If you have any questions during the session, please enter them in the Q&A box, and we'll try to address them. Everyone that has registered will receive a follow-up email with the handout and recording later today. Today's speakers are Liz Mason and Christine DeAngelis. Liz is a serial entrepreneur, a giant nerd, and an involved, involved accounting vanguard. She is CEO and founder of High Rock Accounting, the department.tax, and a few other related brands. Liz speaks on a national stage, guest stars on podcasts, publishes a YouTube show, and writes frequently. To further her passion for the advancement of the accounting profession, Liz currently serves as a Zero National Ambassador and as the content strategist for Tax Practice News. Christine is a licensed CPA using her skills to help businesses grow and achieve their fullest potential. Christine joined the High Rock team in late 2019 after four years of running her own business. She is now dedicated to running the tax department, a division of HRA dedicated to providing white glove outsourced tax preparation services. Notably, Christine is a nationally recognized speaker providing education to other CPAs on how to best serve clients, as well as education on a wide variety of topics for business owners on how to maximize success. Thank you, Liz and Christine for being here with us. And when you're ready, you can get started. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate the awesome introduction as always. And welcome everyone to our fun webinar discussing grow your revenue this tax season, how outsourcing can increase your bottom line. Now, this is a little different than most outsourcing conversations that you've probably heard. I'm going to give you the perspective of the business owner that has outsourced my tax department completely. And Christine's going to give you the perspective of what it looks like to actually do that. So Emily introduced us. We'll give a little bit more background. I did found High Rock Accounting in 2013, and I have been building this cloud accounting practice ever since. Now, one of the problems that I identified early on was how to scale tax and do that effectively, which is where the tax department came into play. Now, once we got to the point where we could actually support the separate entity and growing this as its own standalone business, we brought on this awesome, awesome human, Christine, and I'll let Christine introduce herself a little bit right now. Thank you, Liz. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here this afternoon. And thank you, Emily, for that awesome introduction. As she mentioned, I have been a licensed CPA for over 10 years actually going into my 14th hard to believe filing season this year. Um, but I've served in a whole bunch of different capacities, everything from traditional public accounting to serving as the CFO for privately held businesses to, as Emily had mentioned, running my own practice. So I have a lot of different perspectives that have led me into running the now tax department. Um, and gonna talk about those perspectives today and how we can help everyone to grow and scale their businesses this filing season. So I wanna take a minute before we get going and ask all of you to just imagine yourself about four months from now. Now I know everybody's starting to cringe because here we are in November, we're only a short month um, after our October 15th filing deadline. And I'm certain that there is more than a few of us who are still feeling the pain of the 2020 filing season. It felt like this year's busy season absolutely never ended, right? And unfortunately, I hate to say it, um, we're about to go into another one. So we have another filing season starting really quickly here. So I want you to imagine yourself, we do this every single year, right? It's March 15th. You and your team have already been hard at work for like six or seven weeks, getting closes done, collecting information from clients. You've already been working a ton of overtime hours. Your team is burnt out. Everybody's overtired, stressed out. You're starting to feel that pressure from clients. They're asking where stuff is. 
the pass through business returns were due today. Not everything got done. A bunch of them had to get extended. You already know you're going to have to be preparing those returns in the middle of the summer. Clients are asking how that's going to affect their individual tax returns. And you're looking at the calendar thinking to yourself, I still have four more weeks to go until April 15th and until me and my team get a break. So all of us look like this picture where we're just stressed out. Um, and I want you as we go through today to just be open minded to what if there was a better way? What if we could have tax season be a different experience for you and your team members this year? So that's where I come in and that we did this, right? So one of the biggest problems that I saw coming in was, you know, it, it was struggle, struggle to be able to build a tax practice in a, in a good way, right? So I started researching what it looks like to outsource tax. Now I said, okay, so first I tried hiring a contractor and I hired a great EA who was able to prepare the returns and get them ready for me to sign. But this individual was not quite at the level where they could sign all of the returns themselves or that they had thought through tax planning issues or really understood the higher level tax, tax side of it. And part of that was because I could not afford an EA that could do that, right? And I couldn't afford a high level tax CPA and, and otherwise I would have, right? And so that was a ton of extra work on my part to do that. Now, there's a bunch of different companies that do this, that outsource pieces of tax in different ways. You can hire contractors through some really great recruiting firms. They'll be able to hook you up with them for seasonal employees. There's also the ability to hire them through some tax software. And there's you know, provided staff associated with some of the bigger tax softwares that can also help you fill gaps or just make sure that you're staffed for the right size for the, the season. There's companies that do preparation only where you effectively put together your tax work papers, you put it on a shelf, so to speak, and then the tax preparer on the other side who are contractors for these um, you know, tax prep houses will pull it off the shelf, prepare it, and then send it back for you to you for review, signature, and filing. Um, there's overseas options. You can outsource your tax to Indonesia, to India. Now that comes with other risks and other considerations that we're not going to get into here because we're not really discussing how to do an offshore outsourcing more how to do an onshore outsourcing. Um, and then there's other outsourcing firms. There's a bunch of outsourcing firms that you could approach and talk to about being able to just hire them for the preparation side, the compliance, the big things that matter. Now, I was overwhelmed when I started doing this research and I truly wanted a start to finish white label white glove service that I could offer to my clients inside of Hyrock and take the bookkeeping practice that I already had built up and gotten to the point where we were doing lots of CFO advisory and working hand in hand with those clients. I wanted to be able to pull in that tax planning side and not have to do it all myself. So that was the biggest piece was I, I am a, a by trade a tax CPA. I spent about a dozen years in large international firms working on the tax side and doing this work, but you can't do both. It was impossible for me to scale the company, run the team, grow other revenue lines while also doing all of the tax. So I got overwhelmed at the landscape as it exists today. Now there are all of these options for, for you guys to take advantage of, and we'll talk a little bit about the how. So what are we talking about today? Very important to set the stage for what that looks like, the agenda. Why, why outsource to begin with? What are the benefits of that? Ideal candidates for this. So is your firm or is your practice ready for this next step? Does that work for you? And if not, you don't do it, right? But identifying if you are an ideal candidate is a very important piece of this. What are the benefits of outsourcing? How can this actually provide additional service lines to your bookkeeping firm? How can this alleviate staff frustrations on your tax firm? How can it right size your company to grow in the way that you want? And then identify what type of provider you need. I just explained there's all of these different options out there that all look a little bit different on the relationship, but there are ways to, to figure out what's best for you and who you should be talking to to help with this. And then we'll talk a little bit about how this has worked well, how this has worked poorly in some case studies so you have a good real world understanding of what we're talking about. 
Now, as Emily said, please add any questions you have into Q&A. Feel free to chat us. We want this to be as interactive as possible. We would love to get your questions and answer them in line or even hear your experiences if you have done tax outsourcing, whether they were good or bad. That's the whole point of this is to get the full picture of what works well, what doesn't work well, and how you can use this in your practice. So some of the challenges that brought rise to me personally deciding that I was going to outsource tax for Hyrock was scaling and growth. I mentioned that a few times. Now, picture this, I am one human. I am trying to scale this firm. I do have a lovely business partner who was very, very helpful on the accounting process side, whereas I was focusing on running tax and technology inside of our firm. So we grew between a few years over 80%. Now, trying to scale up tax planning and tax compliance while you're doing that was, it was so overwhelming to me. So I sat back and I said, okay, so in order to hire the right tax person for my firm right now, I need to basically get someone with at least 10 years of tax planning and compliance experience to be able to advise my clients in the way that will help them. Now that person isn't cheap, right? You're looking at, you know, in most parts of the country, a base salary of at least a hundred thousand, a lot of times upwards of that. And it's, it's a lot for a small practice to handle. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this myself, bootstrap. So every tax season, I was working 9,500 hour weeks to be able to run the practice, advise my clients, be their CFO, grow the practice, take prospecting meetings, take tax work on at all. And it was overwhelming. So I went to that next model. So my thought was, okay, so if I can't hire somebody to replace me, maybe I can replace just the compliance piece of it, which I did with the contractor. And what I found for me was the contractor did great at getting numbers on to forms and sending it to me. And it was helpful, yes, but it was not enough. And our tax practice had grown enough between year one of me doing it all and year two of contractor, which was actually in the, the history of Hyrock that was like year three and year four. So for three years, I did it all myself. Year four, hired the contractor. Um, and then I started reviewing, getting clients, taking the client planning meetings, working with them to get the signatures, doing all the back and forth on the communication, um, and ultimately we're like signing and filing the returns for them. And that became too much at that point as well. So then I get back to the point of, okay, I really need a solution that can just take this off of my plate. Um, and then, you know, training of your internal team for tax is very technical, right? You, you don't just hire someone off the street and expect them to be a tax accountant within three to six months which you can do with bookkeeping. For the most part, on the base level of bookkeeping, you can have somebody that's extremely effective with six months of training. Now, of course, they need a lot of management and oversight and all of that stuff, but on the tax side, that is not a reasonable time frame. You're looking at three to five years to get them to the point where they're truly effective, unless you hire somebody that has the experience, and again, cost prohibitive. So setting the stage for all the challenges of what happens inside of a firm as you're scaling and what you're doing um, to grow. So Emily, could you launch our first polling question? Give you guys a second to answer this. What's your biggest tax season challenge? Not enough experienced staff to do the work, cost of tax software and resources, not enough time to prepare returns and still advise your clients. I wish we had an all of the above, but you have to pick your biggest. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, all of those fun multiple choice exams where you have to think through what's the best answer, not the only answer. All right, 30 more seconds, then you can close it out, Emily. So 36% said not enough experienced staff to do the work, which is mirrored if you go search tax manager on Indeed, there's like 20,000 openings in the US, which is insane to think about. I'm sure some of those are duplicative posts, but 
at the same time, that's a lot of open positions for tax manager. 15% said the cost of tax software and resources. I hear you, tax software is ridiculously expensive um, and companies seem to capitalize off of that every year, jacking their prices and making you commit to three to five years for your contracts. And the 48% said not enough time to prepare returns and still advise your clients, which was effectively the biggest issue I was running into as well, was that I did not have time to do everything. Thank you guys for being vulnerable and sharing your biggest challenge. So who's the ideal candidate to consider outsourcing it all? Bookkeepers, CFOs, and a lot of firms do both, right? Do both the bookkeeping and the CFO advisement. Lawyers who have a lot of clients and we you know, work with some tax lawyers um, that want to be able to say, oh, hey, you know, we'll figure out all your planning and all of the um, you know, the, the difficulties of what happens with tax and the structures of your businesses and whatever else is happening. Um, but then you have to go work with this other CPA for compliance. And sometimes it's just easier to take it straight from the information that the lawyer has down to an outsource firm that can do the compliance in one under one umbrella. Financial advisors and wealth managers are great people to consider this. Um, and CPAs that are looking to scale or for industry specific knowledge. So we all know that there are some industries in this world where you know you can take it on for an, um, an accounting standpoint and you figure out how to account for it, but the risk comes when you start trying to figure out the tax side of it and that there's a lot more intricacies to the tax law than there are to accounting principles when you're looking at really complicated industries. And sometimes you might not have, you might be the, a great tax compliance person, great tax planner, understand the, the landscape of it, but you might not have that industry specific knowledge to truly maximize the, the tax positions of your clients there. So that's another reason where you can consider um, hiring an outsource provider. Now, I have to say the industry, so we have a sister company called Rebel Rock and Rebel Rock um, focuses on cannabis companies. Now, trying to find people that understand section 280E and all the risks that come with cannabis is very, very difficult. It is um, one of the biggest challenges I think that not only accountants have or bookkeepers have or CFOs that are in the space working with these industry clients have, it's also a problem that the industry clients have. They can't find enough good tax accountants for this particular area. So that's another place where you might consider I need to outsource this. I need to hire somebody that, that can do this piece of it. Now, there are lots of benefits to outsourcing as well. I think that, you know, we think frequently when you hear the word outsourcing, we think, oh, that's bad, right? But then we started redefining what outsourcing meant when you start looking at cloud accounting firms. And most of our bookkeeping firms are cloud accounting firms at this point, right? And those firms are outsourcing accounting and bookkeeping and CFO for other companies. So outsource in and of itself does not mean anything bad. It does not always mean that you're going overseas. And frequently that term has a bad connotation. And I'd like to say, like, let's get rid of that bad connotation and start focusing on the positives. So what are the benefits that outsourcing can bring to you beyond, you know, identifying some of these issues that we've talked about? So freeing up time was the biggest benefit I saw. So we at High Rock have grown a ton over the years. And I went back and looked particularly for this webinar, what the growth was between year four and year five. So year three was the last year I did it all myself. Year four, I hired a contractor. Year five, we started outsourcing completely all of our tax compliance. Not necessarily all the planning, but all of the compliance piece of it was done, which means that I was no longer reviewing and signing tax returns. I was not communicating with the clients to collect the data. I was not doing those back and forth where it's like, well, you know, did you guys sell a house this year? I'm pretty sure you told me in some email way back when that you sold a house. Can you send me those um, documents? And then having the client send me a picture of their mortgage statement and going, no, no, I mean, like actually the closing documents and having them be like, I don't know what that means. And well, sometimes it's called a HUD one, right? So you have these ridiculous back and forth with clients that can take a long time. 
And freeing that time up off of my plate as the CEO of High Rock gave me the ability to actually grow this entity. And it also gave me the ability to launch Rebel Rock. That was the year that we launched a sister brand to focus on a different industry. And the only reason we were able to do that was because I outsourced the tax compliance. Now, I told my clients, I was very upfront about all of it. They all know how this relationship works. Um, and it's, it, it works really well. So we just got a really great question. Is it legal to outsource services provided by companies located in other countries? It is legal. If you're a CPA, the guidelines say that you have to disclose that, that it's going overseas, that any information is. And then as you know, a fellow accountant, I would say, just make sure you have extremely good security if you're outsourcing overseas. I made the decision to outsource onshore so everything that we outsourced from High Rock was to US-based tax preparers that were sitting here in, in the States. And that helped us because I didn't have to disclose their location to my clients, but I did disclose that I was outsourcing to my clients. So all of our engagement letters say that we have a relationship um, and explain very clearly what that looks like. And we're very upfront with it in the in the sales process. And we tell them, you know, they function as part of that, a part of our team. We just have the ability to scale up and down on the tax side now, which we didn't have before. So when I was preparing for this presentation, I went back and I looked at our um, growth trajectory. So between High Rock and Rubble Rock in the year that we went from you know, the contractor relationship to fully outsourcing, we grew 205%. The year before we grew 86%. So just like, when you think about what this extra time did to actually grow my company, and I am very aggressive and want to grow the entities. I mean, I talk about world domination all the time, kind of joking, kind of not because we care a lot about, you know, what we can do to make lives of accountants better and also lives of clients better. And because of that, and because of the freeing of time, I was able to do this. Now, the other unexpected side of this that I was not focused on because I was so self-absorbed into how much time I was spending, I wasn't thinking about the cost side. Now, tax software, at the minimum, you're spending $3,000 a year, regardless of what the sticker price is between the software, the states you're going to have to buy, the e-files you have to buy, the e-signatures, um, you know, all of that together is a pretty hefty lift when you start looking at the cost that it takes to actually run a tax practice. And each individual tax practice is paying for this. So we had a probably more expensive tax package than we needed. And we were ultimately paying between five and $6,000 a year just for the tax software. And so when we started outsourcing the tax, I no longer had to pay for the software. And that was awesome. So High Rock absorbed that money back into our operating budget, and we had a little bit extra working capital to play with. And quite frankly, we spent it on conferences back when we could actually travel and go talk to people live, which was really nice, right? Um, another big unexpected benefit was the mitigation of risks. So Prior, I was holding insurance, you know, on High Rock for tax prep, which I still hold, but I don't have quite as much of a liability on it because um, we're not the ones filing it on our EFIN, right? So now the tax department files everything on their EFIN and I don't have to do it. So, um, you know, it, it mitigates risk on that side a bit as well. Um, and then it, you know, makes sure that you have the right expertise on board. So, like I said, some industries are, it's difficult to know what you're doing. You could not be doing it right. Um, there's also the, the, the problem of getting too overwhelmed. And that's where I was sitting, where I was doing everything. I mean, I was working like a hundred hours a week during tax season to be able to even keep the business afloat while getting tax compliance done. And when you're that tired and you haven't slept and you're likely stressed out and frustrated with the world and running on coffee and potentially just donuts for you know weeks at a time, you tend to make mistakes. Your brain is not fueled very well by just caffeine and sugar. I can tell you that from experience. And so when you're making these mistakes, it's a big risk, right? Um, and I, you know, I found some of these mistakes or you know, our, our outsource provider found some of them in years following and not. We didn't make any really big major mistakes, but there's always that what if and that pit feeling in my stomach of, 
I can't believe I missed that. Like, I can't believe I did not get this giant new asset that they purchased actually on the tax return and depreciated in the year that it was purchased, right? And we all know that that's a pain in the butt when you don't do depreciation, right? Because it's a change in accounting principle for the IRS. It's not just a quick fix, right? So there's things like that that come up um, that I, I was not expecting. And I pride myself on having very high quality work. Well, it's impossible to have extremely high quality work when you are that sleep deprived and that underwater and everything else. And so consider this as an option for, okay, how do I do this? Do it well for my clients. Don't stress myself out and make it, you know, affordable for everyone all around. Which brings me to another benefit, maximizing client value. So when you think about how clients perceive this, so that's probably the biggest pushback that I hear from other firms when I tell them that I've outsourced tax. They're like, well, what do clients think about that? And quite frankly, our clients love it. They don't care that it's outsourced. All they care about is that they're getting high quality service. That's it. At the end of the day, they want responses to their questions. They want somebody to hold their hand on tax matters and tell them that they're making the right decision. They want to consider opportunities and they want to know that they're taken care of. Now, the other side of this is timeliness. I, when I am overwhelmed, tend to introvert. So I pull back, I close out email, and I know that that's very common for a lot of people that are struggling with stress and, and being overwhelmed. And so my clients would sometimes send me an email and be like, hey, you know, it's March 20th. I know my tax return is due April 15th. What else do you need from me? And well, occasionally we'd get the what else do you need from me? Normally we'd get the emails that are like, hey, where's my return? It's the deadline's coming up, right? And I wouldn't respond for two to three days because I was too, bar too buried. Uh, now it's like, oh, hey, your return's actually drafted. You can go review it. And um, on top of that, you know, we have these five questions for you preemptively. So make sure to go answer those so we can finalize this and get it out the door early. And my clients are like, what just happened? Like I'm used to being everything coming at last minute, setting up meetings like the 14th, the 15th to get signatures. And I know, I know um, this is hard, hard to hear. A lot of people don't like to admit how far behind they get during tax season, but it's everyone is across the board. It's not just you, right? Um, so feel, feel good in the fact that you're with good company in that. And now my clients don't deal with that at all. They're extremely happy. They love the fact that we have a deep bench of tax advisors at the ready for them. They love that they can come to us with a, hey, what if this scenario, what if I purchase this business? What if I purchase this asset? What does this look like? What are the tax loopholes I should be taking advantage of? And instead of me saying, hey, I'll get back to you in a week because I have to research and look at this and figure it out, I ping the tax department and I say, hey guys, like here's the question coming through. And half the time the question is going directly to them anyways. We have a tax email address that's monitored. But if it's just sent to me personally, because you know, as their CFO, as their advisor, they're used to interfacing with me. I can respond generally within a few hours. I get a response. I'm like, oh, awesome. Like, here's an article about this here. We can run a scenario. It's going to cost you X, Y, Z. And clients are, are super happy with the timeliness of the responses and the, and the quality of it. It's not a, I think this is how we're going to do it. It's a, oh, we did this on another client. Here you go. Like, here's the whole package. Let's go ahead and, and move forward with it. Although there are still the oddball questions that I get all the time, like, one of my clients who asks me frequently, if I buy this jet versus this jet in these different price brackets in this entity versus this other entity, what's the benefit to me or the trust? And then I'm like, oh God, do we really have to figure this out? Um, okay, yeah, we do. We do have to figure this out. And also when you buy that jet, can I have a ride? Because I think I deserve it after figuring this one out. But for most of the normal questions that you get on a day-to-day -day business basis, the, the, the answers come very quickly and it's able to, to help there. And not only that, our team doesn't stress out about it, right? When you start working on tax in general, teams tend to get really stressed during tax season. Um, and there's like this level of anxiety where everybody's really close to snapping. And I feel like people just throw more food at that issue, right? It's like, oh, well, if I come with bagels, they're not gonna be mad at me when I ask a question, they'll be a little happier. Um, 
but you know, when we're, when we're looking at our team satisfaction and happiness level, they're happier because they don't have to try and learn this incredibly difficult side unless they want to, in which case we let them, you know, pursue a career in tax. But if they're, if they're coming to us to learn accounting and they truly want to be an internal financial accountant, we give them the ability to learn that without forcing them to learn tax. And on the flip side, they get a lot of training and development and they learn from these experiences and they see the tax plans of their clients and they're able to apply it across the board. And it's not that they're alone in the advisory side of it, you know, or they're relying on just me as the other, you know, trained tax accountant internally in the firm. They have a team to rely on and they have a contact and they know exactly who to ask these questions to and what that looks like, right? And our team satisfaction went way up when they stopped having to do tax, although they did not like learning how to do closeouts for tax. I do have to be completely frank with that. Uh, teaching our bookkeeping team to do the closeouts for tax returns and what things need to be like delineated for tax versus not was definitely a learning curve and um, something we're still working on, to be fair. So we get a lot of questions from the tax side saying, hey, what about this account? Can you send us the GL detail here? How is this booked? Because the implications for tax are differently, but they're getting better and we're learning through the process of it as well. And I think that it's created a much better culture for our team allowing them to focus on what they do best, which is the accounting side. All right, Christine, you're up. Okay, awesome. Take over control here. So let's talk about how to identify a potential outsource provider. So now you've made the decision that you want to pursue this opportunity, right? You want to go down the road of looking at, I think I want to outsource some or part of my tax work this season, but how do I figure out who I'm going to work with? Who's going to be the best fit for me? Who's going to provide the best service for my clients? So let's talk about some of the things that you can analyze and go through and ask as interview questions. Um, as you are looking at providers that might be a good fit for you. So experience first. I think it probably goes without saying that you want an experienced team. Uh, Liz talked about, you know, all of those training hours that you pour into teaching someone. Taxes challenging, right? That in order to get someone experienced, you really need someone who's been through several filing seasons. Um, it's not easy to take inexperienced team members and train them on how to handle complicated tax preparation or planning matters in a short period of time. So you really want to look for an outsource provider who can bring a lot of experience to the table. This is also an area where you can have that great cost savings, right? Where you're going to get a really high level experienced person who's going to be reviewing returns, maybe handling some of those tax planning and strategy issues with your clients, um, but you're going to be getting it at a cost point that's far below what it would cost you to hire, say, like a full-time internal tax manager who would normally bring that experience to the team. So you want to ask that question, how experienced are the team members that are going to be working with your clients and preparing the returns? Part of that might be asking what the review process is like. For example, I can tell you that on our team, every single one of the members of our team is actually experienced enough to be able to sign the returns that they're preparing themselves. Now, we do still have a review process in place because obviously review and accuracy is extremely important to us. We want to make sure that we are putting out a very high quality product, but it means a lot to me to be able to say that all of our team members that are working on these returns are experienced enough to sign their own returns because that means you're really working with a professional on the preparation of each individual return that goes out the door. And then depth of team. So we want to talk about this too. Now, we all know 2020 was a crazy environment. Um, and of course, we hope that nobody ever gets sick or has to deal with, you know, large numbers of the team members being out of the office at the same time. 
But a lot of us experienced that this year, and we're still going through those challenges of, you know, dealing with what happens if multiple people have to be out of work at the same time. So that can present a really big challenge, especially in a small organization. I've been in the position when I ran my own practice, except for a couple of part-time staff here and there, for the most part, much like Liz described, a lot of it fell to me. I was a one woman show. I was, was responsible for the majority of the work. So if I got sick or something happened to me, then I'm in a really challenging situation that I'm not able to be there and be reliable for my clients who hired me. So that depth of team, how deep is that bench in, that is available to meet your client needs is super critical. So that if I'm unavailable for a day, I know that there's enough depth in my team that all of that is going to get addressed, um, regardless of whether or not I'm there. And you want to feel the same thing for your clients when you choose an outsourced provider that you're relying on that provider to handle all of this work getting done for you from front to back. And you want to know that there's not going to be any blips in service no matter what happens. So ask that question about the depth of team. Now, we're going to also ask about knowledge base. So I consider this to be a little bit different than experience, where experience might go over, you know, a period of time, how many years worth of practice have you had at this? Knowledge base is more that breadth of knowledge, right? We talked a little bit at the beginning about the different industries. So you could have you know, a lot of clients who are specifically in real estate development, and that has a lot of nuances even when it comes to the tax preparation, you want someone who's got a good knowledge base in that particular industry. Or if you're a practice who has clients all over the map, you might have a bunch of small 1040s. Comparatively, you could have a bunch of large C corps, but you want a provider who's going to be able to address every single one of those unique needs across the board. Um, or even if you specialize in something, Liz mentioned, the sister company Rebel Rock Cannabis. Um, so that is an industry that has very specific nuances, right? And maybe you haven't necessarily wanted to venture into some of those industries um, with clients yet. Maybe you've had to turn away some work because you haven't felt like you can appropriately serve those industries. So here's an opportunity where hiring an outsourced provider who has that wide knowledge base to really uh, address anything that you bring to the table, that could be an opportunity to maybe not have to say no to that work in the future or feel confident that someone is going to really address those specialized needs of your whole client base. Okay, other considerations for you. So I know we already had a question come up about pricing model. What should the price be? So price point for outsourcing is going to be different across every provider, right? Liz laid out the landscape for you. You have a bunch of different options when it comes to choosing the outsource provider that you might want to work with. And obviously price point is going to vary depending on the type of service that you're getting, depending on the type of returns that you're gonna have providers be preparing for you. But to give you some general idea of what we think the best model is to look for, and you can ask these questions right at the beginning, we think a flat fee pricing model is absolutely your best solution. And here's why. Because every single one of us has been put in that position where we're presented with a project and we go, I don't know how to quote this, right? Should it be hourly? Should it be a flat fee? What value am I providing? How does that match up to the price point? We've all been in the position where we're looking at projects after the fact and it's hard to tell, did we make money? Did we lose money? Did we price this right? Did we not price this right? Those can be challenging and time consuming questions to answer. We don't want that to be the case when you're choosing an outsourced option. We want it to be very clear for you so that you can say, this is the flat fee 
that I am going to pay to my outsourced provider. So if I'm going to have a 1040 prepared by them, it's going to cost me X dollars. And that way it makes it really easy for you to say, if this is the cost that I have to pay for my outsourced provider, very clear flat fee costs, you're then able to add in the appropriate profit margin that you need to see for your business. And that gives you the price point that you're going to charge your client. So now it's very easy as you're interviewing outsource providers to say the flat fee plus my profit margin equals this for a price to my client. Is that an appropriate price point? Are my clients used to that price point? Am I able to charge that price point? It makes the whole process really easy and clear for you to see, is this going to be the model that's going to work for me? Is this going to be the provider that's going to work for me? And then we want to look at technology. So the tech stack for your, per, your outsource provider, what are they using? And this is more than just the tax software itself, right? So the tax software itself is actually not as much of a consideration here. You want to look at how are they using technology to communicate with you? How are they using technology to communicate with clients? Um, and you want to start to get an idea of what that's going to look like. So in tax preparation land, we have a lot of file sharing that has to happen, sensitive information that has to go back and forth. We all know that that can't go back and forth across email. You want to ask questions of any service providers that you're interviewing. Um, are you going to be required to communicate with clients using their system or are they going to communicate with clients using yours? Are you required to learn how to use a brand new file sharing system or are you, they going to incorporate themselves into your model and how you already do things. I think it's important for you to have a good understanding of what you want that to look like before you start interviewing providers so that you can ask questions that are geared towards, I want it to look like this. In other words, if you don't want your clients to have to learn how to use a brand new file sharing system, if you want your clients to be communicated to using the same technology that your firm is already using, then it's important to ask an outsource provider that you're interviewing whether or not they're going to integrate themselves into the systems that you already have put in place which leads me into branded service and asking questions about branded service. So branded service is the feeling of your client's experience with your company, right? So if I work for John Smith CPA, John Smith's clients have a certain feel. They have reasons why they hire John Smith, they might have a, you know, a certain relationship with your company, how they feel getting a service from you. We wanna really protect that brand. So even though you're choosing to outsource the work getting done, you know, Liz mentioned earlier that did clients say anything about an outsourcing happening? Ideally, what we want to make sure happens is that your clients, the ultimate end user, the taxpayers, are receiving service in a way that they don't feel as though this service is branded any differently from anything else that they're receiving from your organization. So if I'm going to be the person preparing all of the tax returns for your clients, I'm interfacing with them, I'm answering their tax questions. We're doing that in a way that the client's perspective is that I am just any other team member that's part of John Smith CPA's firm, right? So that their experience in the year that you start outsourcing isn't any different except for maybe better, more efficient with some more value add, but we don't want them to feel like all of a sudden there's this other provider involved. We want it branded within your existing organization. We just had a great question come up, which is how do you navigate a client scope creep with a flat fee? So I want to uh, clarify a minute for everyone listening. When we're talking about the pricing model here, this is how the firm is paying the outsource provider, not how the firm is billing the end client. So you can continue to 
bill your end clients however you want to. We're just saying when you're getting into an outsourcing relationship, having a flat fee is the easiest way to be able to know what your profit margin is at the baseline and then make sure that you're pricing out to your clients appropriately. So you know what your fixed costs are and then you can take a moment and say, okay, I know this client takes a lot of communication. So I'm gonna add a 20% margin here to their quote or you know, I'm going to tell them, you know, we're going to have a flat fee plus an hourly on top of it or however you're used to billing your clients. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is a great point. Um, and that, again, to reiterate, is why it's so important, we think, to look for an outsource provider that presents you with a flat fee model, right? Because if you're presented with a flat fee model, it's very clear to you what your costs are. So then you have complete autonomy and flexibility to take that cost and work in whatever margin you need to see on top of that to have the appropriate value for those client specific projects. So in a flat fee model, for example, we might have two different 1120s that we're preparing for one of our clients, right? So we're the outsource provider, we're providing service where we prepare, review, finalize, e-file, two different 1120s. One of them might be significantly more complex than the other. However, our flat fee is going to be the same on both of them. What you ultimately charge your clients for each one of those returns might be different. So your profit margin on the more complicated return could potentially be higher. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit for you. Let's talk about some case studies. So, well, I'm gonna give you some situations where we got some really positive feedback, a case where outsourcing was exactly the perfect fit for them, everything was done really well, and then I'll give you a scenario where outsourcing didn't work so well and things to look out for. Oh, I'm gonna answer this question. Um, does the outsourcing company use their own software or yours? That's an excellent question. So just to go back for a second, when we're talking about technology, um, it's, it's anticipated, I would expect, that your outsourced tax preparer is using their own tax preparation software. So Liz and I have both talked about the cost savings from the standpoint of you're not buying your own tax preparation software when you are using an outsourced solution to do all of the preparation and review services for you. Um, now, talking about technology in terms of file sharing software and communication software, um, for example, if you use Slack to communicate with your clients and maybe you you use Dropbox to securely share files with them. That might be a situation where you want to continue using your own software because that's what your clients are used to. And that's where you want to ask the outsource provider, can they also use your Dropbox? Can they also use your Slack channels? Because you want them to communicate and interact with your clients the way that your clients are used to. And there's a few companies that do outsourcing that do require you to have your own software. So there, it's everything from top to bottom. So what Christine described is what we envision as the perfect environment, but that might not be the best for everyone. Let's say that you want to still do five of the returns and outsource the 50 ones that annoy you, then it might be better to start looking at, okay, I'm going to buy my own tax software, hire a contractor to do this, or hire one of the contracting firms that does this. Uh, there's also some of the tax softwares have their own outsourced providers as well. So I know if you work with CCH, CCH has a team of tax preparers that knows their product really well. And once you buy a license to that, you can hire them on an hourly basis as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's give you a scenario where outsourcing really was a great fit. So this is a quote from one of the clients that we worked with this past filing season. Their practice, they provided solely CFO and accounting work in the past. They had not offered tax preparation services in years past. When they came to us, what they were looking for and what they had realized was happening a lot in their practice is 
they were consistently having to refer tax work out to other CPAs, other practices that did do tax work. Um, their clients had a large variety of experiences. Some of them were great. Some of them were not so great. Um, you know, issues with timely filing of returns, issues of uh, accountants getting back to them in enough time. So they were really looking to be able to create this environment where they could be more of a one-stop shop for their clients. So that here they were, their team was excellent. They did really great bookkeeping work. They did really solid accounting, financial statement preparation, uh, long-term financial strategy with their business clients. And they just wanted to be able to rope in this tax piece. So what they had said about us after working with us this past tax season is the tax department team has been such an exceptional resource. They've been extremely knowledgeable in handing, handling client needs beyond just the standard preparation. Our clients are all feeling confident that their questions are being answered, their tax planning and strategy are being addressed, and it has all been done on time, which is a big deal for setting the tax department apart from other preparers. So that was a huge compliment. Um, timeliness, we all know, as Liz talked about, it can be a really big struggle during the time of year where you have so much work layered on top of you. It's very difficult to get back to everyone in a timely fashion. So this was kind of the perfect scenario where we were able to really give some of that efficiency and timeliness back to their clients um, just by being that outsourced tax provider for them. And we also, beyond just the normal preparation, in this particular scenario, they had a client that came in and right off the bat, they wanted to look at whether or not making an S election was the right thing for their business. So in addition to doing their tax preparation, we were also able, you know, with that wide knowledge base, we were also able to do that S corp election analysis for them and then walk them through that process as well. Does the outsourced company bear the liability or responsibility for the return? Excellent question. So that really is going to depend on the provider and that's an excellent question to ask. So that's something that should be spelled out in your engagement letter with whatever provider you choose. Certainly something that I would ask them in the interview process um, and make sure that it's clear in whatever, whoever you choose to work with, whatever arrangement that you have, that you know who is ultimate, li ultimately liable and responsible for the return. I can tell you that for us, we sign all of our own returns. So it's the tax department signature and we're ultimately responsible for the preparation of that tax return. But make sure that that is a question that you get addressed um, so that you know exactly what the arrangement is. So a scenario where outsourcing did not go according to plan, outsourcing gone wrong. So in this example, Fortune 500 company outsourced a major manufacturing and marketing project. So the evaluating factors here where things kind of went off the rails, managers were being evaluated themselves on their ability to cut costs and increase profit margins. Obviously, we want both of those things to happen when you choose an outsourcing solution. But if that's the only thing that you're looking at when you choose your outsource provider, that's where we might be able, where we might be getting into trouble, right? If we're only looking at the cheapest options so that we can have the largest profit margins, we're not fully vetting our outsource provider. And that's what happened in this particular scenario. They did not ask the questions to make sure that the provider actually had the capabilities of performing the work that they were hired to do. Turns out that they didn't. Um, they did not vet the outsource provider to make sure that they had the depth in their team to handle the full workload of this particular project. They were just really looking at the cost. It was the cheapest way to get the work done. Now, we've all been in this scenario too that you might spend the least amount of money up front, but it always costs us more in the long run to do the work twice. In this particular case, they had to scrap the entire project and start back from the beginning um, because the brand really wasn't being protected in this scenario. The work that was coming from the outsource provider was not something that they could pass on to their customers. So ultimately they lost out on all of that potential cost savings. That's not a scenario that you wanna see yourself get into, which is why we just went through such important questions to ask of potential outsource providers. 
Any suggestions on outsourcing monthly tax returns? I saw that Liz just answered that one. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to imagine ourselves now again. It's March 15th, except that this is a completely different March 15th. You've decided this year that you are going to outsource some or all of your tax return preparation, which means that you took hours and hours and hours of work off of your team's plate. Your clients are happier. They're getting faster responses. They're getting some of those really burning tax strategy and planning questions answered for them. So many more returns are done now on March 15th than they were last year, which means you have less extensions to worry about. You have so many more business pass-through returns that are done that can now go right into your individuals getting done on a timely basis too. Your team isn't nearly as burnt out. And it's also allowed you the opportunity to focus on those high-level client services, high value to them, growing your organization, really supporting your team. And everybody's doing it in a way where we're just not as tired and overworked as we have been in years past. Completely different feel for this March 15th than the one that we described at the beginning of the seminar. Okay. If TDT assign their turns, are accountants then referral sources? Liz, do you wanna give your thoughts on that? Yeah, so not technically. Technically, the relationship is um, the the tax department would be a contractor to the end firm. Um, it, they're signing their returns, and it's very much outlined in the um, got the agreement there and shown, you know, where the risk is, and it's on the EFIN with the signatures there, so that it it is a pretty clear line. But it is not a referral source directly, although you know that is a separate relationship that can be discussed with the any outsource provider in general. Um, but no, it's more of a contractor relationship if you're looking for a direct correlation. Excellent. So I know we're gonna switch to question and answer mode. If there's any questions that have come up for you that we haven't already addressed, we'll take a couple of minutes and make sure that we get everyone's questions answered. Don't go anywhere though. Um, we do have a couple of action steps for you at the very end that we will give to you if you're ready to start considering an outsource provider. So what's your starting price point for outsourcing? Yeah, so that is definitely going to vary, um, Ramona, by provider where that starting point is. Um, I would highly encourage you to just reach out to whatever providers you're considering interviewing for this upcoming season. And again, just look for that clear definition, right? So if you reach out to us, we have a clear pricing table um, that we provide as part of our engagement letter and our proposal process. So any outsource provider you're looking to work with should be able to give you that really clear price point to answer that question for you. Um, there's been a disclosure to the client that the accountant would be outsourcing the tax prep. Yes, um, absolutely. So you always want to disclose to your clients that you are outsourcing the tax preparation. Again, we very rarely have clients that, you know, are even concerned about that. We actually provide an addendum that you could give to your clients right as part of your existing engagement letter. We have wording that you can use to tack on to any engagement letters that you're already sending to your clients, um, letting them know that you are outsourcing saying the tax preparation. Can entity returns be outsourced? Julie, I think what you're asking me is can business returns be outsourced such as, um, you know, like C-Corps, S-Corps, partnerships? If I'm missing, okay, yes, yep, yes, absolutely. Um, again, that's going to vary by provider. Um, so you want to make sure that you're asking whatever provider you are interviewing that they make you they are able to prepare the types of returns that you are looking to outsource. So your practice may only have 1040s, um, but if not, if you're looking to outsource C Corps, S Corps, those things, you want to ask that of whatever provider you're interviewing. We want to the last polling question um, while we're doing QA, just to, to ask, you know, what's the biggest tax season cost to your practice? What are you guys looking at? More out of curiosity's sake, what we're seeing across the board. But keep the questions coming. I know we have about five minutes, two minutes left. Two minutes. And just to give you these action 
items while you are answering that last polling question for us. So what next steps do you take if you've decided that you definitely want to go down um, the road of considering an outsource provider? Where do you go from here? So identify providers to interview. So you wanna look at who it is that you might wanna go through all of those questions that we went over with. Um, so start a list of who it is that you might wanna consider interviewing that you think would be a good fit. Identify the number of clients and the types of returns that you want to outsource. So how many returns do I think I want to outsource? Is it all of them? Is it half of them? Um, what types? So Julie, back to your question, am I outsourcing all my 1040s? Am I outsourcing entity returns? Having an idea of what you're looking to outsource is helpful before you start interviewing providers. And then decide what you want your clients to experience. Do you want them to feel like this outsource provider is just any other member of your team. Um, you want to kind of envision what your client's experience of this is going to be so that as you're going through those interview questions, you make sure that you're identifying a provider that is going to give your clients the experience that you want them to have. All right, we'll stick around for a few. Um, if you guys have any last minute questions before we close it out. Otherwise, we sincerely appreciate you attending um, and learning from us today. And again, this is sponsored by Canopy, it's an awesome practice management system. If you guys haven't looked at it, it works very well across the board from bookkeeping to tax management um, of clients and really just handles the whole CRM side of it, which we appreciate as well. Liz and Christine, thank you so much. Great presentation today. Everyone, Thanks thank you for joining us. If you do have any last minute questions, go ahead and send them through. Otherwise, I will get the webinar recording and the handout to everyone here a little bit later today. We hope to see you all at the next Insightful Accountant webinar. And we hope to have you, we hope you have a great day. Thank you all so much.